government handouts keep going bad. Strangely, PBS is covering this now because it's airing a documentary on corporate welfare. This is basically socialism for the rich. Here's our Stossel TV-sized version of it. IKEA was founded in my home country of Sweden. Here in America, IKEA is best known for meatballs, a nearly impossible to pronounce product names. So IKEA said, oh, we're interested in coming to the Memphis area. We think it'd be a great fit for us. Um, but obviously with that, they also said, well, how much money are you gonna give us before we decide whether we're gonna come or not? The city of Memphis has a program called the Economic Development Growth Engine to entice new businesses to move to the city. One way it does this is by offering large property tax abatements. As always, the abatements are complex. And so it's the big companies with lots of lobbyists and lawyers that are able to figure these things out. IKEA agreed to create 175 new jobs with an average salary of $41,000 a year. Lines are growing tonight for IKEA's grand opening tomorrow. There was some pushback from other businesses as well. What about us? I mean, we've been here and we, we employ here and we pay taxes here. You're really pitting these gigantic corporations who know the government and have tons of lobbyists against mom and pop shops in our community that we're trying to save. You're basically asking people to pay more tax dollars in order for their competitor to succeed over them. Two years after IKEA Memphis opened to much fanfare and millions in tax breaks, new documents show the Swedish furniture retailer doesn't have as many jobs on the site as they promised. There's only one IKEA in Memphis, but there's 15 to 20 independent furniture stores in Memphis. Where's our tax break? Less than two years after IKEA opened, King's Furniture went out of business. These are our tax dollars. We work really hard for them, and they should go to things that we need. They should go to essential government services, roads, schools, police, fire. I mean, that's what this money should go to. I don't, I think it's essentially just not the role of government to give money to big corporations at the expense of small business owners. Many such programs begin with good intentions, but they result in unintended consequences. And those unintended consequences never, ever go away. We will always stand with the American farmers. Now to the farm bill. America's annual farm bills give money to farmers to make sure America has an adequate food supply. But that justification is just bunk. Most crops don't get subsidies, and they do just fine. Farmers choose to raise corn and soybeans because those are the um, crops that there's government uh, guaranteed uh, revenue insurance. Exactly, guaranteed money. And who gets it? It's the big guy who have the resources, not just to lobby in Congress, but to actually have entire shops to try to get and maximize the amount of subsidy that they're getting. Many of which are not even American companies. In 2016, the largest pork producer in the US, Chinese-owned Smithfield Foods, increased consumer prices in stores, but decreased the amount they paid farmers for live hogs. Yet they still benefited from the government subsidy system, heavily lobbying to keep feed prices low. It's estimated that in 2019 alone, agribusiness spent over $135 million on lobbying. We embody what people romantically think about when they think about a farm. These farmers spent nothing. Jeff and Zach raise hogs, cattle, vegetables, and poultry. They sell primarily to families and restaurants in the area. Pete Eshelman owns a four-star restaurant in nearby Fort Wayne, Indiana. In 2015, the Indiana State Legislature invited Jeff and Pete to make a presentation on farmers' markets and local restaurants. I come today as a fifth-generation Wabash County farmer. My son, who is my partner, is the sixth generation. What that but means is... they were in for a surprise. We finished our presentation, and the chair of the committee said, well, that's illegal. They immediately had to stop selling and serving chickens from the farm. They basically came up with a story that small farms processing chicken on the farms is a health risk. What really happened was that the bigger politically connected farms got the legislature to ban competition. But Hawkins chicken was popular. So that's how a hashtag was born. Hashtag keep chicken on the menu. 
like you've enjoyed this meal, will you please contact your representative? People were telling us they would call and they actually would lead with, is this about the chicken thing, when they picked up the phone. Not even hello. Yeah. Once again, Jeff, Sack, and Pete head to Indianapolis to testify. The opposing side was not only represented by state regulators, but also by large agricultural lobbying interests, including the Indiana Farm Bureau, the Indiana State Poultry Association, the Indiana Pork Producers Association. It's all about eliminating competition. However, in this case... The social media campaign continued to create enormous public pressure. So local politicians took a closer look, without the influence of the agricultural lobbyists. What can we do to make this better? Remarkably, a revised bill was drafted to everyone's satisfaction. Restaurants, like Pete Eshelman's, can continue to serve locally sourced poultry, and neighbors have a choice in the food that they eat. A rare happy ending. One small victory amidst America's growing welfare for the rich. You can watch the full documentary at Free to Choose Network. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to see our next one.